This week we're headed to Colorado to hunt with our good friends from Tri-State Outfitters. After 20 plus years of hunting with Tri-State Outfitters, I'm gonna let the owner Bridger use my tag and hunt his very first mule deer. All right, I'm gonna shoot him. He's in the shade of that tree, Bridger. I've done this hunt before, and I tell you what, this is a great place to hunt mule deer. There's a deer. I am just like, eek, and John's like, oh, whoa, whoa, wait. Oh, my goodness, y'all are great, great. Everybody stay right behind me. Time to get up, time to get up now. Our lives move pretty fast, but it's only in the moment of the hunt that life slows down. It's not a matter of what we do, but how we do it. With passion, drive, and the challenge to accept nothing but our best. We are the Wild Lifers. I'm excited to be in Colorado this week. I just, the weather's great. I love this area, it's beautiful. I have big hopes of getting the biggest mule deer I've ever had. I've killed a lot of big mule deer in my life and I really don't get the charge out of killing them that I used to, so it's more fun for me to, you know, find somebody that I really like and give them my tag if it's legal that I do so and just go along and watch their excitement when they get to take an animal like, like the mule deer that are at that place. This year, Dan has decided to give his tag to none other than the owner and operator of Tri-State Outfitters, Bridger Petrini. Dan's an old friend more than a client even. He's been hunting with us for 20 years. The fact that he, he, he actually gave me this deer hunt just as a gift, I couldn't believe it. I thought he was joking with me because he's all the time messing with me. And uh, he told me that I was gonna shoot this deer this year and I, I couldn't believe it. Um, I turned him down at first, but that wasn't an option. He wouldn't let me turn him down. Dan sent to guide Bridger on his first mule deer ever. The time isn't on their side. In just three days, Dan's brother Thomas will be flying in for the bighorn sheep hunt, and both Bridger and Dan will be guiding Thomas. My brother Thomas drew the bighorn sheep tag in an area that we're hunting that, you know, Tri-State has the hunting rights on, and I'm trying to get Bridger a really nice mule deer before Thomas gets there so Bridger and I both can take him on his bighorn hunt. Locating a mule deer may be difficult for the wildlifers because the Midwest, including Colorado, has been 30 degrees warmer than years past. The weather's a little bit warmer than it normally is this time of year in Colorado. Usually there's snow all the ground and they don't seem to be seeing a lot of deer moving. I'm just eager to get out there and glass and go find some. However, warmer weather can bring out other animals searching for food. We're headed to the creek so we can go look for some mule deer in the bottom of the creek bed, and this coyote runs across. And anybody that knows me knows when we see a coyote, it doesn't matter what hunt we're on, it's a coyote hunt. <laughs> I'm ready to just like pull the trigger, and they're like, wait, 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 there's a mule deer. And I'm like, but there's a coyote. And there's like, no, there's a gigantic mule deer walking right behind it. There's a deer right behind it. Yeah, that's what I was just looking at. And there's a mule deer just walking in the background. It was kind of funny. That's Stephanie for you. She's got a trophy class mule deer buck standing right in front of her, and she can't stop looking at the coyote. You better decent wait, buck. Stephanie. Looks like a decent buck. The buck ended up cruising down in a creek bottom before John could get a good look at him. So they drive to the other side of the creek to relocate the buck. Really good take buck. I love the coyote. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny though. So we're driving along, and sure enough, that buck he pops up, and he is just 
right there. Let's shoot him. Oh my God, are you kidding me? He's heavy. He's got a third. Why don't I want him? Oh my God, what's wrong with him, John? He's so pretty. I am just like, eek, and John's like, oh, whoa, whoa, wait. His mass on that left side. Where are you, are you just going to let him? I can't believe y'all don't want to shoot him. John Ebert, I, I'm, I'm concerned. He's not crazy like this. No. I'm busting at the seams here. I'm ready to shoot this buck. I just need my guy to say, OK. The wild lifers are in Colorado looking for monster mule deer. Shortly into the first day, Stephanie's crew spotted a potential shooter, but her guide, John, wasn't fully convinced. He's a real symmetrical, big D forks. <laughs> I just wish his whole frame was bigger. Oh my gosh. It's hard, you know? We could definitely kill him and be doing fine, but... But what? I, I think he's handsome as heck. He'd look great on my wall. Do you agree, Coleman? He's a great looking deer. You know, every guide wants to get the biggest and the best deer for their client. And I guess he feels like this one's just not, not what I need to shoot at this time. I think we should look a little bit. Okay. Okay, I'll quit wearing on you. <laughs> no, I mean, if you just want, really bad want to shoot it, there's nothing wrong with him, that's for sure. He's big. Well, I think he's handsome as heck. He looks heavy as I'll get out. Yeah, he's big. I felt like we were in the candy store, and my mom said you can't have any candy. They elected to pass on that buck, and it was a wise choice because, you know, John, of all people, knows what kind of deer are around there and the area and what the, the ranch has produced in the years past. So it really allows you to be picky and, and wait on the big one. Stephanie hoped she and her crew made the right call because this was looking to be the only buck spotted that day. It really slowed down after our morning, you know, seeing the big buck that I wanted to shoot. We didn't really see much of anything the rest of the day. We've seen a lot of doe and no bucks with them. And that's very odd this time of year. It should be full rut. There's a ton of deer and big deer on this property. It seems to play hand in hand with the weather and this year it's been unseasonably warm and the deer really are holding tight in the shaded areas and up high and just having a hard time locating them. As light fades over the property, both parties were unable to fill neither Bridger's nor Stephanie's tag. Bucks just weren't moving up in this heat. Because of this, Stephanie can't help but dwell on their decision to pass on that buck. We haven't seen that many bucks at all. It's been kind of quiet, extremely slow. And I think I might have convinced John that we should have shot that buck that I wanted to shoot. So maybe, just maybe, I've got him convinced. So let's go, go try and find him again. A revised plan to try and relocate Stephanie's buck in the morning couldn't have been a better decision because a cold front is projected to blow through Colorado overnight which should get these bucks turned back on. The weather's starting to change and it's getting a little bit colder and a little front's coming in and maybe we'll see some rutting activity. And anyway, I'm hopeful. See, everything's different. Well, it might be worth hunting all the same stuff over again. It worked. I convinced John we need to go back after that buck that I was originally on the first day. We head over there and we get to the place where we kind of last saw him. Not very far. He is right there and he is in a perfect position for me to take him. I'll park right on this corner. It'd be real slippery.
There you go. Got him. Still. I felt confident that the shots that I made on this buck, and sure enough, there he was. He's awesome. We should have shot him the first day. Great buck. Good job. Thank you, John. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Thanks for with me. I know. He's so pretty. I'm, I'm glad we took him. Nice buck. I know. Appreciate it. Well, I got a text that Stephanie got a buck. John was excited in the text, so I know it's going to be a beast. But Bridger and I still haven't been able to find one, and we are running out of time really quickly because Thomas will be here very soon, and we've got to both put this hunt on pause just so we can head to the other area and take Thomas on the bighorn hunt. Stephanie's got a big buck on the ground, and Bridger and I are burning holes in the side of mountains with our binoculars trying to find a deer. And we've seen some nice bucks, but just nothing that quite makes the grade. And you know, Bridger's holding out for a, for a giant, and, and he should. That's what you should do at, at this particular place. Although the entire crew teamed up to get Bridger a buck, they were unable to glass one up before Dan's brother Thomas arrived on the ranch. Now the focus turned to getting Thomas a bighorn sheep. Well, with everybody there mule deer hunting, we all drove out to the flatlands on, you know, below the mountain when Thomas arrived to go on his hunt. I've always been wanting to go sheep hunting and Bridger and I've been visiting about it for several years and he called me one day and told me he'd finally gotten a tag for one and told me it was mine if I wanted it, so I jumped at the opportunity. Stay where they can't see us. It's so stinking thick. That's a pretty big hike going up that mountain there. I wasn't sure about Dan or Thomas on that deal, but Dan works out all the time and he's in great shape, but the elevation kills him. It does anybody that's not from this part of the world. And I, I was a little concerned to get all the way to that, that cliff edge, but, but they toughed it out. They, they were troopers and they did it. I just don't want to get into that real thick stuff because we're getting closer to We were only 540 yards from that opening. The last no, place. around there over here. No, they're over there. We got this in between us now, but we now we're going to have to start. I think you go that way, bud. You're going to be 400 yards shot. If we can see them, but we can back out if we don't. Let's try that. The sheep are in an area on the side of the mountain where it made it really difficult for us to, to get up there without being seen. We had to use a lot of thick brush to get up to the area where we were at least on the same plane with them to try and get a shot from across the canyon. They're right there, they're 280 yards right there. Can you find a place to stick in there at you? We might be able to do it. Do you, are you right on sticks or would you rather go prone or what would you want to do? I'm right on sticks. Okay. With the sun setting quickly, Bridger's able to get Thomas into position just as the sheep bed down. It's the one on the left, so I want you to far left. Far left, there's four rams. I want you to count four and get the one on the left. Don't shoot, okay? You know, the sun is fading and fading fast. The rams are bedded on the other side of this canyon and about, I think they were 250 yards away. They have no idea that we're there, but we're running out of light and you know, it's now or never, and we're starting to have this conversation, you know, should we take it while it's laying down? <laughs> With decades of experience, shooting in all types of conditions and at long ranges, Thomas is a skilled marksman. Knowing Thomas's capabilities, it wasn't gonna be a question of ethics, it was more about should we let them stand, should we not, and finally they wouldn't, and we were running out of daylight, and we were forced to play our hand, and we uh, gave Thomas a green light to take a shot. And I'm about to take him. All right, take him. Good shot. Reload, reload. You got him, but don't shoot another ram. Just get on him. He just fell. Are you on him, Thomas? Yeah. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, good work, man. Good shooting, too. That's a heck of a round. Thanks for the use of it. Wow. We finally found the Bryman that could shoot a rifle. <laughs> <laughs> it was like awesome whenever I saw the other ones run off and I saw him limping off, and then when he went down, it was just an incredible feeling. You can't ever tell actually how massive they are, and when you walk up and you're starting to see, like, wow. Normally, you get up to them and they shrink in size, and this one they evidently grew. It was really, really, really cool. Oh, what an incredible, incredible animal, seriously. That is truly amazing. I, I had no idea it was even that big. They're so beautiful, and he's so chocolate colored anyways. He's darker than all the rest of the rams. It just was unbelievable. To actually have my hands on him, was, it was a very, very special. We went through a lot of struggles and different things to get all that done and worked very, very closely with Division of Wildlife in Colorado. And a lot of people put a lot of effort in, into getting that sheep tag, so it was amazing. It was just amazing to be able to finally put my hands on him. Bridger did a fantastic job going after this sheep. He's always gonna get the job done. Now that he's gotten such a big Ram for Thomas, I really feel compelled to get him a, a big mule deer now. The wild lifers are in Colorado, and after a slow start to the mule deer hunt, Stephanie ended up harvesting a mature buck. On the other hand, Dan and Bridger halted their hunt so Bridger could guide Dan's brother Thomas on a bighorn sheep which was successful. Now, with one day left, the entire team has come together to try to get Bridger his first mule deer ever. Well, our success on this trip has been absolutely remarkable, but Bridger doesn't have a buck, and we've got one day to get it done, so we gotta make it happen today. With everybody looking for a buck for Bridger, it didn't take long for us to find one. We just had to put a really short stalk on this buck, and he showed up out of that draw, and it was on. He's in the shade of that tree, Bridger. Where's he at, man? I can't see him. He's in the shade of that pine. There he goes. He's running down the draw, going to the right and up. Do you see him? All right, I got him. Stop him. Ah. He's, the sec he's the second in the line? Yeah. Ah. All right, I'm gonna shoot him. Come on. Just over him, reload. He's running to the right. He split off from the other ones, he's going to the right. He's slowing down, Bridger, he's gonna stop. I'm on him again. You hit him. Once he regrouped and made his second shot, he made a perfect shot on him and he got him. So we saw him go down into a draw and uh, walk down there, and sure enough, he took going down into it, to the draw into a new level. He actually went right down in and died in the water, in the stream. That was really cool when we recovered him. Uh, he fell in that creek. It's just a big spring-fed creek, and uh, that was the first deer I think I've ever had going to the water like that. I've had other, other animals do that, but it was beautiful, actually, how he was laying in that flowing current, and it, it was gorgeous. Pretty cool, Dan. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think that's the first deer I've ever had die in water. I think. That's the first mule deer I've had die in water. Mm -hmm. That's your first mule deer to ever shoot. It is. That's it crazy. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I killed whitetails and, yeah. and uh, a couple elk. That's yeah. the thing, you know how it is, God, you don't, you don't hunt much. No. They love it. This is my first mule deer. And a lot of people think I'm lying when I tell them that, but we don't, we don't hunt. All we do is guide, and that's all I've done since I was 17 years old. Uh, so I, I've actually done very little personal hunting. And the gratitude that I have and the appreciation is I can't really describe. I can't put into words. Well, it's been a great week up here. I love this area. It's just beautiful. I, I love being here this time of year. It was just a perfect week. When a friend like Bridger gets to get a deer, my wife Stephanie gets to get an absolute monster like the one she got, and my brother Thomas got to fulfill a dream of getting one of the most coveted sheep there are. I just can't imagine how this hunt could have been any better. You know, it was a little bit more difficult than years past, but that in and of itself made it even sweeter. For all 
your wildlife or social media needs, make sure to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.